This video is sponsored by no one. Make sure to use my code for no one in the video description below to get 20% off your next adventure with no one. Hi, so I was made aware of a tool called CodeX AI, and what it supposedly is able to do is to answer programming questions for you. So you can enter some query, like I need to write breadth for search in Python or something. And what it has been trained on is a bunch of GitHub repositories and a bunch of other things apparently. So what I wanted to do to see if this actually is up to snuff is to figure out whether or not it can solve other problems such as those in theory. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to ask code X AI, some questions that are typically asked in theory, and let's see how close it actually gets. Here we got the playground for it, the link's in the description. So let's put something basic. So what I wanna do is to create a DFA for, let's say, oh, I don't know, zero to the N, where N is at least 10 or something. Let's see what happens. Okay, so, so that, that's probably not right. So zero to 10, Q zero through Q10, that's that's probably not, that's not right. So let's see. Uh, maybe if I put deterministic finite automaton or something, uh, misspelled it, and let's see what actually happens now. So if I, okay, so that, that actually changed the answer. So it was able to figure out something about DFA before, but, um, when I use the word DFA and now I put deterministic finite automaton, now I'm actually changing what the behavior is. And it apparently is, it seems to work. So we, we have 10 states, uh, alphabet is zero. So it actually figured out the alphabet, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then on input zero, it goes to one, one goes to two, et cetera. And then 10 self loops on zero. And that actually works, which is pretty amazing. Let's kick it up a notch. So uh, let's say that I want to uh, create a non-deterministic finite automaton for uh, some regex. So let's give it a, a zero union one star one one zero zero union one zero star union epsilon. So something moderately complicated. So let's see what happens here. <laughs> so I don't know if the answer is going to be right, but the fact that it's able to create this from this regex that probably doesn't even exist on the internet is, is pretty amazing. So let's see. So Q0 on 0 goes to itself. Uh, 0 to uh, Q1 on 1. 1 to 2 on 0. So, okay, so it is not right from what I'm able to tell. So one, it doesn't tell us what the start state is. Bad AI. And the fact that there's no epsilon transition to one of the accept states from uh, one of the start states. So it, it can't be right because the empty string is accepted by this, uh, or at least generated by the regex. And it's not in one of the transitions of the of the DFA from the supposed start state here. So apparently it doesn't get the answer all the time, but the fact that it actually understood what I meant by NFA, and it seems like it got some of the behavior of what this regex looks like, but the fact that it's not able to get it, so it means that we're, we're th we theory, means that we theory people are still uh, secure in our jobs. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more high level. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a context-free grammar for let's say zero to the n, one to the n, uh, two to the m, zero to the m, where n and m are at least zero. So this is moderately complicated because you need to be able to have a grammar for the first part, a grammar for the second part, and then combine the two together. So let's see if it's able to handle this. Okay, so, so it's, it's close. It's, it's not exact, but it's close. So the t variable makes the one uh, uh, one and twos in the middle. So those aren't the same variable. So, so that can't be right. And it looks like the S is trying to make zeros and ones at the beginning. So it looks like it's making this part, but it doesn't realize that the twos and zeros need to be on the right side. So here, the correct answer would be to make something kind of like the T variable, 
but uh, one of them being the zeros and ones, another version being with the twos and zeros, and having the start variable going to the first one concatenated with the second one. So it got some of the information, but it's not all the way there. So what I would probably use this tool for, and I probably will use it, is to get a lot of the way there, a lot of the mechanical stuff, without having to uh, implement all of it myself. It'd be really nice if there were a way to export this in LaTeX so that I don't have to type it all myself. And then maybe for the finite automata stuff, it's a pain in the butt to actually make the figure. So something that would be nice would be if it exported it in Tix, T-I-K-Z, which is the library that I use to, um, to actually make these machines. Okay, so let's start throwing some proofs at it, or at least some proof questions. So what I want to do is I want to prove that let's let's give it an easy one that zero to the n one to the n where n is at least zero is not regular regular better spell it right so let's uh submit this <laughs> oh okay <laughs> apparently it's it spit out the entire proof. Oh my God, wow. Okay, so let's let's go through this. So this language is not regular because it cannot be generated by any finite state of automaton. To prove this, we can use the pumping lemma. So suppose that this language is regular, then there exists a number P for which uh, any string in the language can be divided into three substrings such that, okay, then we have the fi famous three conditions and, and they're totally right. So that's probably just boilerplate that it was able to learn. I, I, I'm just blown away that it's able to do that. Consider the string zero to the p, one to the p, the that's the string to pick. Um, it can be divided into substrings x, y, and z, such that that thing is also in the language. And then we consider pumping up. The string must also be in the language by the definition, but it has more zeros and ones. It probably should have actually put the actual string here versus just saying it has uh, more zeros and ones because you... Um, because it's kind of implicit from the first condition that that's true, but it's not actually explicitly written. The fact that this is somewhat automatically generated is pretty amazing to me. That an AI is able to create a proof for a particular language. In fact, let, let's try giving it a language that I'm just going to think up on the spot. So let's say that I have 0 to the n, 1 to the uh, 1 to the m, where n is equal to m squared is not regular. Um, so I, I obviously did not prepare this in advance, so I have no idea what it's going to do here. But I'm going to assume that it's going to uh, fail on this because it, this proof probably doesn't exist on the internet. And knowing things about perfect squares, it may have a little bit of trouble, but let's see. Um, okay, so it, it clearly choked on this one. Um, it contains strings 0 to the n, 1 to the n for arbitrarily large n. This is not a regular language because it's not possible to have an FA that can keep track of two counters and an M to accept this language. So that's not actually completely true because if we have two counters where there is some dependence but not a really strong dependence, then it can be regular. So one example of this is where if we have that n mod 2 is equal to m mod 2, then that actually is regular because it's only the parity that actually matters. And that parity is bounded by 1, basically. And therefore, you can actually show that this is regular. So if you read like an even number of zeros, then you must read an even number of 1s. If you read an odd number of zeros, you must read an odd number of 1s. And it's actually pretty easy to, to make a DFA for that. So it clearly choked. In fact, let's even ask it. So let's make a DFA for this language. And let's see what happens. And it's actually pretty amazing if you're watching this that it's it's clearly thinking at each step. It's not just zooming out all of the output all at once like it learned something from some proof somewhere. It's clearly thinking about this, um, which is pretty cool. And I'm not going to check this, but it seems reasonably right. But it, it, it might not be right, but I'm not 100% uh, sure about that. Okay, so let's give it some harder proofs. So let's uh, create, uh, no, let's prove that something is not context-free, for example. So um, actually, let's do a more general proof. So let's prove that if R is regular and 
C is a context-free language, then R intersect C is also a context-free language. So something, a general proof instead of a specific example where it can learn from it. So this is actually a general proof. So let's see if it was able to do that. Okay, so it clearly generated something. So let's see, if, uh, let's consider the intersection of R and C. This is the set of all strings that are in both R and C. That's not really needed here. We can generate this set of strings using the following context-free grammar. So um, S makes R, S, or C, S. So that's not the intersection. In fact, that's not even the right language because what this is, is R star. So this whole thing is R union C star and not the intersection of the two. So it could be that we just go through the R thing right here and that is just going to uh, make something that the regular expression can make, but the context-free grammar might not generate some string that the regex can make. So therefore, uh, this isn't going to work. So it may look convincing. So any theory professors watching this should take note of something like this, this tool that can make a proof, quote unquote proof, but it's not actually right. So for any students who want to use a tool like this, you should definitely check that the proof is correct, obviously. And you should understand why the proof is correct or why the proof is not correct. But the thing is that the fact that a tool even comes even close to showing this and is able to understand what regular and context-free means and get something close, that is mind-boggling to me. But let's actually do something that is really, really uh, up there. So let's do a reduction proof for an undecidable language. So let's show that um, emptiness for Turing machines is undecidable, let's say. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay. Okay, so this, this isn't quite the right thing. So the, the proof, I, I just watched it as, as it was going, and it seems like this is showing that the halting problem is undecidable. It's not showing that the emptiness problem is undecidable. This is the standard diagonalization proof to show that the halting problem is undecidable, but it didn't quite get it. So it, I can't give it full points for this, but the fact that it's able to understand Turing machine and undecidable is actually pretty amazing. Let's try to make this a, a little bit easier for the AI. So um, what I'm gonna say is all the machines M, where M is a Turing machine, and uh, L of M is empty. So we provided an actual set notation here instead of just using English here. Um, okay, so then assume that there's a decider that checks if it's empty, we can build a machine. So run D on M and W. Okay, so this isn't quite right. So the decider D, it looks, it looks right, but the fact that the decider D takes a single machine and not multiple uh, inputs suggests that this is wrong right here. And it actually looks like it's showing that the acceptance problem is undecidable and not the uh, emptiness problem here. So the fact that it's even able to get close, at least getting the boilerplate, is pretty awesome. And the fact that it's able to get any of these answers right, it mainly got the ones that are about specific DFAs and context-free grammars and things like that, is able to get that right, which is pretty amazing. And one thing that we should all talk about as a community is what are the implications of such a tool? So in like five to 10 years, what's gonna happen? Is it going to be that we're going to have an automated proof system kind of like this that spits out proofs and we try to verify them? Or should we still try to verify and create our own proofs without such a tool? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are, so put them into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.